Dear student, today we will prepare from the unadjusted trial balance, prepare adjusting journal entries, and prepare the final financial statements. We will also be using Sage accounting software to teach the accounting concepts in class. This is prepared by Jerry LaRocca, myself, and edited by Athanasia Lantrakis. I have provided the unadjusted trial balance for the year end December 31st, 2012. We will go through five adjusting entries and then we will post them on our worksheet, which is highlighted right here. The next step will be to add the on the uh, the amounts from the unadjusted trial balance with the adjustments to obtain our final adjusted trial balance, and we, I will be demonstrating this uh, momentarily. Just a simple note: if we were to prepare our financial statements from the unadjusted trial balance, our profit would be thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. But once we post all the adjusting entries the financial statements will show a profit of $23,300. So let us begin with the adjusting entries. Our first economic transaction is that on December 31st, 2012, $18,000 of printing services were completed and received by the customer. The accounting department did not have time to prepare the actual invoice, record the accrual. On December 31st, we need to record the debit to accounts receivable, increase of an asset, and the credit to accrued sales of $18,000, which increases our sales by $18,000. The description will be to record sales made on December 31st, 2012, shipped but not invoiced. This adjusting entry will be posted as reference one in our worksheet above, and I'll be demonstrating this once we've completed all the other remaining uh, economic transactions. If we note, on December 31st, 2012, my supplies inventory has a balance of $3,500. We have taken a physical count at the end of the year, and we noted that there's only $2,000 of supplies. Let us see what is the adjusting entry to, to uh, record the proper amount. Therefore, on December 31st, 2012, a physical count of supplies inventory was taken. Total amount on hand is 1,005. From the above information, we calculate that 2,000 supplies were used in the business. This is supplies expense of 2,000, and the drill entry is debit supplies expense, 2,000, credit supplies inventory. This will also, this drill entry will also be posted to the above worksheet. If we go back to our unadjusted trial balance, Prepaid insurance shows an amount of $2,400. Let us see what has happened. On January 1st, 2012, the company purchased a 24-month insurance policy for $2,400. No adjusting entries have been made since. The insurance policy, since the insurance policy was purchased, we need to calculate the portion of insurance that has expired in the last 12 months. If we want to look at the calculation, it's basically the insurance policy of $2,400. If you divide by 24 months, it's $100 of insurance that expires per month. Therefore, from January 1st, 2012 to December 31st, 2012, 12 months have expired at $100 per month. When we do the math, it's $1,200 for the year. Therefore, we need to record the following expense. Debit insurance expense, $1,200 and credit prepaid insurance for 1200 This adjusting entry will also be posted to the worksheet above. The next adjusting entry requires the uh, amortization, requires to calculate the amortization for the printing press. We purchased the printing press during the year for $46,000. And right now there is no accumulated amortization. The accountant has not recorded the uh, proper accumulated amortization for the year. Now we will demonstrate how we 
complete this calculation. The calculation is quite simple. We purchased the printing press for $46,000 at the beginning of the year. It has a 10-year useful life. Therefore, if we take 46,000 divided by 10, we obtain $4,600 per year. Since we have not calculated depreciation from January 1st to December 31st, one year has expired at $4,600 per year, or $4,600 needs to be amortized. The July entry to record the amortization expense is debit amortization, amortization expense, $4,600, and we created credit accumulated amortization printing press for $4,600. This transaction will reduce the net book value. And if I can demonstrate how the presentation will show, on the balance sheet, we'll have $46,000 as the cost of the printing press. Accumulated amortization is a contra account, $4,600, and the net book value, $41,400. We will also post this drill entry in our worksheet, and it will be demonstrated at the end of this session. The fifth economic uh, transaction is the following, that on December 31st, 2012, the company accrued one month rent of $400, which had not been paid on December 31st, 2012. The services have been rendered. The company owes $400. Therefore, the drill entry to record the accounts payable accrual for rent is debit rent expense, $400, and credit accounts payable accrual rent for $400. We need to record this drill entry in order to match our revenues with our expenses. And this transaction will also be posted on our worksheet above. So now let us go up to our worksheet. So a quick resume is that our unadjusted balance, these are the, uh, we need, before adjustments, we need the CPA to review the financial information to ensure that our financial statements are fairly presented. In other words, the unadjusted balance, it has to be re reviewed by you, the CPA. Once you analyze the accounts, you need to post the adjusting entries on this worksheet, as demonstrated in a second. And we then will expand, extend the rows to obtain our final trial balance. What we normally do is that if we go to our checking account, we have a debit of 34,000. There are no other transactions. Therefore, the ending balance is 34,600. If I complete one other analysis, accounts receivable accrual, we had zero. In our drill entry number one, or reference one, we debit 18,000, and if you add zero with debit plus 18 debit, gives you $18,000. If we look at the second uh, reference or drill entry, we have supplies inventory of 3,500. In the analysis, the ending inventory was 1,005 in supplies, therefore 2,000 is expensed, and we will be recorded the debit to supplies expense and the credit to supplies inventory because we reduce the, uh, the asset. These are the steps that you should prepare first. Prepare the adjusting entries, which we did. Post, step number two, post the adjusting entries to our worksheet, which we just demonstrated. And step three, extend the columns. Step four, prepare the final financial statements. Now, when you prepare the financial statement, first, complete the income statement, second, the statement of return earnings, and third, our balance sheet. Note that our trial balance is always in balance. In other words, if we post the drill entries, our debits are equal to our credits in total. And because I have my final trial balance in all in one column, a total amount has to equal to zero. From the Above worksheet, we will pre now prepare our adjusted income statement. We note that we have $92,000 credit sales. We have all our expenses and we show profit as a credit balance, except when we prepare our financial statements, we show our numbers at absolute values. We don't need to show brackets in the 92,000 or brackets in the 23,300. From the above, final adjusted trial balance. We also prepare our final statement of retained earnings. Note that profit when it was unadjusted was 13,500 and now it is 23,300. Again, when you prepare the financial statements in good format, you do not show credit balances. 
in preparing our in preparing our balance sheet, or we may also call a statement of financial position as at December thirty first. The un, the adjusted there's a a lot of there are a lot of differences. Accounts receivable accruals unadjusted was zero. Then we have eighteen. You get that from your unadjusted trial balance. Our total current assets now are one hundred thousand three hundred. And note in the long term assets we have our printing press at forty six thousand cost and the credit to accumulated amortization of 4,600. The 41,400 is our net book value, and we add the 103,000, 100,300, plus the 41,400 to get our total assets. We use the net book value. For the current liability section, for the current liability section, we do the same thing. We have our accounts payable, and we have our accounts payable accrual of $400 for the rent. The bank loan did not change. The mortgage June in five years did not change. The common shares was the same. And the 54,300, we get the amount from our statement of retain earnings, which was calculated above. Then we add our current liabilities, our long-term liabilities. Together, they make total liabilities, plus my statement of retain earnings, or my, plus my shareholders' equity of 64,300. Gives me my total liabilities and shareholders' equity, 141,700. And our balance sheet is in balance. You have the Excel spreadsheet, so I recommend that you go over your spreadsheet also and view this uh, accounting uh, video presentation. Thank you for your attention. So we have learned that from the unadjusted trial balance, once we prepare the adjusting digital entries and post them to our worksheet, we're able to prepare the final financial statements. Thank you for your attention, and I'll see you all in class very soon.